Good afternoon. I have the privilege of introducing our speaker today, Mike Dawson. He is a fellow Rotarian. He's visiting from the Five Points Rotary Club. I want to tell you a little bit about Mike. In the summer of 1994, local leaders asked Mike Dawson, then a serving colonel of infantry in the U.S. Army, to create an organization that could unlock the potential of Columbia, South Carolina's 90 miles of rivers. This re resulting structure, based on citizen participation and close relationships with local governments, is an effective catalyst for change that's taking place in our community. Mike grew up in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and graduated from the Georgia Institute of Technology with a Bachelor of Science in Civil Engineering. Later, he earned a Master of Science in Systems Technology from the Naval Postgraduate School in Monterey, California, and Master of Arts in Strategy and Policy from the Naval War College in Newport Road, Island. In his free time, he runs, he paddles, he gardens. He is a founding member of the Wales Garden Neighborhood Association and a member of the Board of Directors of the Waterfront Center. Please join me in a warm Spring Valley Rotary welcome to Mike Dawson, the executive, executive, chief executive officer of the River Alliance. Thank you very much. Well, let the record reflect that my buddy Stan Llewellyn has left. So uh, <laughs> Manny Gaitan used to be in the Five Points Club, and he's going to be my he's going to be my test subject because if Manny gets up and leaves, it's it's hopeless. So. <laughs> what I'd like to do is run through some images of the river, but what I'd like to induce you to do is, as the holiday season progresses, get out there and walk around and enjoy it, because the past 20 years have been an interesting journey, and when we started this, nobody really realized we had 90 miles of river. Uh, I'm going to whip through some slides and show you some images. Some of it's going to be technical stuff, because I'm a policy wonk. But the alliance uh, was structured because of an attempt to get people together to look at the rivers as a resource, we have a board, it's a nonprofit structure, it's composed of the, a lot of folks I'll show you, but essentially uh, you're represented by some elected official if you live in Lexington, Richland County, Casey, Columbia, West Columbia. So we propose policy, usually that policy is a, is a uh, public access system or it's, it's something to do on the river, and we've got to find some money to go do that. And then we do stuff that nobody else wants to do. So in the case of the Three Rivers Greenway, one of our big projects, we do the design, engineering, and permitting, and then ultimately uh, try to turn it over to a government. Uh, in some cases, we got we get stuck with fun things to do, and I'll show you a few of those. So what I'm going to do? It's been a while since I've been out here, so I'll show you where we came. You know, in the probably the last 15 years, show you what we're doing right now, and show you where we're headed in the future. Usually, like the fish joke, uh, water is draining out the bottom of the slide, but that's downtown about 20 years ago. That's the Broad River, the Saluda River, and the and the Congaree River. That's our mission statement. Generally speaking, everything we do is legal in the state of South Carolina. Those are our members. So as I said, government structures, the zoo, the University of South Carolina, if you're, if you're a, a alum, uh, the uh, Midlands Authority for Convention, Sports, and Tourism. And when we started, we proposed that we would do community-based uh, a process where they go out and ask a lot of people what they want to do in the rivers and what they came back and said in thousands of uh, interviews they wanted an active downtown where people live work and play uh, and they wanted to open access on a river and they wanted that access to be environmentally sensitive and protect the cultural resources that were there so that it would be a draw for all of us and then if that turned out to be a, a, a tourism development project so much the better that's a little bit of our process. So you take all that stuff and you try to figure out what people told you. And usually it's either a, it's either policy or it's a uh, operational execution sort of thing or it's a it's a thing. Mostly we pick the things out because those were the hardest to do. And a lot of what I'll talk about is the Three River Green one. So if you look at that, there's the Broad, there's the Saluda, there's the Congaree, there's the Gervais Street Bridge. So you know, kind of got a most of these have a map in them. So in, in 1990. Uh, Five, we did our planning process and we proposed this Greenway thing and they said, well, gosh, how much does that cost? Which is typical uh, elected official response. And we said, well, if you look at that lower right of that slide, we need about $70 million. We've made some recommendations on how to get that. We call the Greenway Green Infrastructure, which is fairly typical of uh, sort of progressive cities around the world, literally, who build access to water. And then we said, you know, we got to get 
we got to get some money in the bank. We've got to go ahead and start uh, working with property owners to protect their rights, and then we need to start building stuff. So the first piece we built was Little Granby Park, which is right below the University of South Carolina. Went to a property owner and said, you know, give me your useless federal floodway. We'll do this cool park. We'll pay for it with the City of Columbia. We'll put it back in the inventory of the City of Columbia Park System. So we did about a half a mile. That was the first little project. And folks got out there and rolled around. Everything we do is you can, you can wheel yourself down there in a wheelchair or if you're in a baby carriage or if you're running, you walk and you bike and it's safe and secure. And that started the process going. Uh, we then brought it back up into the university. So if you're familiar with the mill building, those big towers are the, were actually threatened mills at that point in time. They're now residential infill, condo, convertible apartments, all full. The, the 701 gallery is rocking. The churches are growing down there. People are loving it. And we tied it back up to the university's Strom Thurmond Fitness Center. So on that slide, back up to the fitness center and down to the river. And as it turned out, USC got into it. They did their own master plan. They said, Eureka, there's a river down there that we recognize. And so they put their, their uh, USC uh, baseball stadium down on the river. And in front of the baseball stadium, one of our next projects is trying to connect to the Blossom Street Bridge. So baseball on the river and people running around down below. And if you saw the paper recently, uh, InnoVista, the great plan, uh, is working away. And what, what is actually going now is the university is doing all this stuff. You've been driving down there. But you're trying to get over the railroad and then ultimately get down to the river and then fill in everything from the Bay Street Bridge down to the baseball stadium. The price tag on that park is about $40 million. There's some schemes to do that, but the near-term project is a jump over, jump over Green Street. So on the west side, from the Bay Street Bridge down to uh, the railroad bridges in Casey, we did that uh, about 2002. So we. Got the money, built the project. Uh, there was, you know, basically jungle over there, no public access. You had to hack your way through with a machete. And as it turned out, uh, that began to get dramatic booster counts because you could see it from the bridges. So on an average Sunday or Saturday, you go down there and you'll see 450, 500 people an hour. Before there, you couldn't get there. So just some shots of that. That's the typical Greenway. Uh, people out there at all stages of activity. We made a deal with the landowners, so that fence line is the public right away. Uh, donation of the property, we built the Greenway uh, in front of those houses. That was a former city dump of West Columbia for anybody in the real estate side of the room. And uh, those folks have little gates down there so they can come on the Greenway. Lots of stuff happens. So this happens to be our Rotary Club uh, sponsored the NAMI walk out there on the, on the river one, one uh, Saturday. Uh, but lots of walks, lots of runs, it's, you, know, you can get it for nothing so you don't have to pay a lot of process costs. <coughs> and then later on we, we scooted it up in front of the, uh, underneath the Hampton Taylor Bridge about another half a mile and actually got access to the, to the Broad River. Now people are using it for floating down with, uh, with inner tubes. I think there was like 10,000 people uh, paid about 50 bucks to float down and get picked up last year which has turned into be uh, Georgia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Florida, uh, it's a tourism attraction to get people in the river and extract their money. But they're safe and secure. We've got emergency call boxes out there. We've got emergency rescue guys who are trained in, on every jurisdiction. The, the five local police, the uh, two sheriff's department and the three city police departments interact. All the light bulbs are numbers, so if you fall down and dial on, you, know, you can get, get picked up. So it worked out pretty well. Uh, on, the, on, then on the Casey side, uh, below the railroad bridges in Casey, we put another mile in, got Casey to pay for that, it worked out pretty well. And again, it's an extension uh, down towards uh, the uh, Interstate 77. On the, on the Columbia side, where the canal is, we opened up Riverfront Park. And if you watch the bridge on Broad River finally come back in, uh, that ramp will be rebuilt, connected to that bridge, so all of those neighborhoods up around the northern area of Columbia can get down to the canal and then ultimately uh, get downtown. The Broad River, which is a river you go over in Interstate 20 and you don't know what it is because you forgot where you are, uh, we opened that up for rowing and so the uh, sport of rowing is growing in the Midlands. We've had that working. We've had people put in now at Peak, which is way up below the, below the dam and float down to Harbison Forest and then float down to the right above I-20. So that little river, which is kind of unknown, it's gotten some access, but the, uh, the rowing piece is actually recognized nationally. We're getting uh, teams from the Northeast come down in the wintertime because 
it's not frozen solid and uh, and row in the in the uh, in the middles. But this big blob, the uh, big green blob down there, I'm going to refer to that. But that's Interstate 77. If you know Casey, this is 12th Street. If you know Krispy Kreme, uh, in case he's right up here, it's the first exit across the river. So I'm going to come back to that. But we started a partnership uh, with the National Park Service and Congre National Park. Most of you have probably been down there, 50,000 acres of old growth forest. And when we got into this, they were turning school groups away. They didn't, they didn't have enough potty space for one school bus to you know, offload. By the time they got finished lining up, they had to get back on. Uh, they turned away school groups. So we actually built them a visitor center at the Congre National Park. So if you've been there and seen that building, the road was built with the National Guard of South Carolina, probably the only state that would do that. We built it with the Richland County Road Supplies, and then we had such a great time with the guard guys that the Adjutant General helped us put together a proposal, and we built that building for the federal government. At about the half the price they would expect, it was an appropriation. We used guard from around the country, uh, to include Puerto Rico, many, to build that building over about 20 weeks. Probably never be done again with the current political situation, but. It was a unique project. The National Park Service loved us for that. Uh, and we've started a project with them down in Casey around that big green block. Because as we found out, there's 12,000 years of human occupation down there and layers and layers and layers of history. So the thought was, well, what do you do with all that stuff? You're sitting next to an interstate highway. You're on the Congaree Creek. Can we build a park down there? And we started calling that the 12,000 year history park. And as it turned out, uh, that's the mayor of Casey, we, we decided about 2000 then we're going to go out and take a look around and try to figure out what we could do with it and how we could approach it. Uh, and we decided we need to put a trail system down there. So you get out of your car, get on the trail, go through layers of history. That's the creek, so it's gorgeous. I was actually standing on an abandoned sofa when I took that picture, but <laughs> clean it up, you know, give access to it. and. We got the University of South Carolina to do a market study for us because all my elected friends like to know how much things are going to cost and how many people are going to show up, I guess that. So we figured we could get about 150,000 people in there on an interstate highway, stop and see stuff, and then tie it back to every local museum. We also got the National Park Service to do all of the, take all the archaeology and put it to an English language translation of 10,000 years, starting at, you know, dinosaurs and moving forward. But as it turned out, that's a great effort because we were able to convince people that it was a compelling story. It told the history of the North American continent, the story of America, and the story of South Carolina. And as we went forward, we got recognition nationally, America's Great Outdoors, the National Recreational Trail. We've had the National Park Service in to help us figure out how to do a partnership park. And most recently, we have done archaeology on the, on the 1865 Battle of uh, of Congaree Creek, so I'll tell a little bit about that. But it's we've dug up, we've dug up the area out there. We know where the fighting occurred, and we're going to start putting that together. And as it turned out, uh, we had proposed doing this as a trail system that was actually on Scanna Corporation property. Uh, Scanna is trying to sell part of the property next door, so uh, they allowed us to use their money on their land to build trails for public access. So we have bridges in here and we have all of this trail system built and as of Tuesday that was turned over to the to the uh, city of Casey. And so the history park, which I'll run through quickly, we're coordinating with the National Park Service and ultimately we're going to tell the story around that trail. Uh, in the near term, we're focusing on the Civil War piece because it's coming up and we've got a uh, a series of events which we're planning through the uh, burning of Columbia 150th celebration. So if you go to their website, you can pull this thing up. And what we're going to do for that program is we now have about 30 volunteers who are going to lead tours around the battlefield. Uh, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be kind of a fun thing to do. So if you get a chance, uh, check out the website, and you can you can log on and, and get a tour with us. So. Those trails are in, they're, they're gorgeous. We built a 315 foot steel bridge in an environmentally sensitive area, which is worth going to see. Uh, that's the bridge going in. Had to do it in sections, crane the sucker in, and avoid all the trees. That's what the trail looks like. And there's my inspector out checking it out with the official Scotty Dog of the, of the Rural Alliance. But that system, 
is now all of this is going to be tied in and, and uh, we're going to open this section on the 9th of January. It's actually built now, but all of that is physically there. So uh, skipping forward and I'll back up one. Uh, if you go up here, if you're driving out of town, here's 126. <laughs> Uh, here's 26 going to Charleston, at Lexington Medical Center. All of this is basically done now. That's done now. That's done. So what do we got to do to connect the, connect the dot? So at I-26, right at that crossing, we're building a bridge. I saw the preliminary direct design drawings yesterday, and from right there to right there, we're going to build that bridge, and then we're going up to Lexington Medical Center. So we're going to tie Lexington Medical Center to the river, and then we're going to tie all of that from up here down around the zoo, we're actually going up this way to tie that into downtown Columbia. So that money is, if you are in Richland County, whether you voted yes or no, uh, we're going from Interstate 26, down around the zoo, up here and back over, and that's $7.9 million within the, the Richland County Penny uh, Transportation Penny. The good news is uh, we're also the highest priority in the Penny for Greenway, so we're going to spend that in 2015, 16, and 17. So that'll be done in about three years. And then we'll have access to Whitewater. Uh, we've already had a donation. If you if you look at this map, which is actually owned by the City of Columbia, is a gorgeous spot. And a private donor has uh, started giving us money to, to build that island as a park, which will link into the green one. Uh, that's about, a, when it's done, it's probably about a half a million dollar gift. So the intended outcome is for my granddaughter to come back down here and uh, wander around all those islands and enjoy that as much as we do because I think what we have is a resource that is, is truly unique in the nation and we're unlocking that resource in a way that people can come in at all activity levels at, at any stage of their life that they want to and they can go out and enjoy it and feel better about it and feel good about, uh, feel good about living here. So with that I'll be happy to hush and be happy to answer any questions that uh, you might have. <coughs> Yes, ma'am. So there's lots of opportunities for naturalists. Um, have, there, is there any thought or planning around like a shopping area or a restaurant area or something that would bring nightlife there and bring money to businesses and tax opportunities? Is there any thought with that? Yeah, it's uh, the active downtown part is actually working pretty well. The the uh, a whole other part of this is back from the Greenway. So if you plot that Greenway and you start plotting infield residential since 2002, there are a boatload of residential and apartments. A lot of them cater to students who, you know, love to be on the river and they can walk to USC. And then KC and West Columbia are actually getting actually what I call more urban with more, more at nightlife. The Vista is connecting down to the river and then the USC is going to connect down to the river. So what you're going to have is a, you know, sort of a area down there is developing on its own speed. The, uh, the residential is actually going really quicker. Uh, when we started this, there was a question, will anybody ever want to live downtown? And the answer is, well, yeah, they sure do now. Uh, you, uh, the, the city of Columbia is actually subsidizing some of the, some of the infill residential and that's going faster. So it, it's, it's coming, it's not coming as fast because of the, uh, the uh, downturn, but it's, it's really coming. The Vista is rocking all the time, so. And it will eventually connect to Derby Street Bridge, will it actually connect over to West London Casey? Anybody else? Yes, sir. Right behind you, it says the river aligns 90 miles of what river can be. That, the, that map doesn't appear to reflect 90 miles of river, so obviously you're bound to. Yeah, if you, if you look at the, the uh, well, I have the other map, but I'll trust me on this. If you'd like to paddle it, we can do that. You started. You started Par Shoals and come down to the the canal. You started Lake Murray Dam and come down to the confluence, and you go from the confluence to the end of Richland County, and you add in the Columbia Canal. You got 90 miles of river. We've actually picked up four or five miles of creek now that we don't. You know, we're not claiming, but uh, from the from the Gervais Street Bridge, if you get in the you get in the you get in the canoe, you eventually you come out past the the uh, Concord National Park, and you come out down to Highway 601 which is a long way. Um, part of what we promoted with the, what I call the, the non-urbanized river stuff is try to get people out in canoes, kayaks, you know, get them camping, get them doing stuff. We got them into the land side of uh, Concord National Park, so we're getting 
I think we started there were about 80,000 people that found it. Now they're getting about 180,000. But most people, they go to our gorgeous visitor center, but they don't really get back out to the river because it's a, it's a struggle. So part of that will be marketing and getting more active and, and going. So, yes, ma'am. You may have said this, and I missed it, but uh, what, do you, uh, what, are, what are the numbers showing in terms of economic impact? I don't even try to plot it. The state newspaper did a, uh, a, if you looked at the map of Columbia before all this occurred, and if you look at taxable property, which is depressing, uh, there were vast spaces of, of non-taxable property and you know cemeteries, churches, not to knock it, not non tax paying. But if you look at it now, I think the state came up with like a billion dollars worth of, of infill. Uh, the Olympia Granby Bill is a pretty good example. We did a specific project with the mill villages. There was a movement afoot to tear down a million square feet of those old mills with the big towers, which are gorgeous. Big, you know, the, the intended outcome was to grind it up and ship it to you know a landfill and to move the quarry up into the neighborhood. So we got involved in the request of the two governments. We're able to put together a plan, get the trucks out off, uh, out, out the back door, out to uh, Rosewood Drive, promote that mill uh, as residential infill. And as it turned out, those are now, I think they're 350 condo convertible apartments. Those were originally valued at about $200,000 per million square feet, now they're about $35 million. So a lot of that tax base enhancement is really sort of working. Yes, ma'am. I, I asked a question. What I really want to know is the economic impact from the um, tourism, like the rolling. Oh, yeah, I have no clue. But I, what, I'll, what we're plotting, uh, for example, the little raft thing. Yeah. Um, you float, it's a, it's a high-tech operation. You got an inner tube and you got a, you got a bus, okay? <laughs> but you got to have a public access to put it in and a public access to take it out. So with that simple idea, we proposed that you know, some relatively young entrepreneurs start that bit. So where there were zero, there are now six to eight, 10,000 folks going down that river paying you know, 50 bucks a pop. How that money circulates, you know, I could probably hire USC to do that, but I don't, I don't really care that much. But what I, can, what I can tell is, from the zip codes of the people who go there, they are not from Casey, South Carolina. I mean, so the good news is we're tracking them from, from Georgia all over North Carolina and, and Florida, and they're coming in and having a great time and thinking, wow, this is cool. Uh, we have done special events where we've tracked, you know, how many folks from Blackwood go to an event on the river. Um, the ones that we're doing, we've done concert series, we've done plays, we've done you know lots of lots of different stuff, and it, you know how, what the actual number value is, don't know. And quite frankly, I don't, I, yeah, I think it'd be fun to know because I, I can tell you that we are getting a little bit of everybody on the Greenway, but how much money they spend when they're down there, you know, it'd probably take me thirty thousand dollars and a couple of PhDs from USC Business School. We could we answer that question, but I don't know what it is. Yes, ma'am. There's signage up so that if we went down around 77 across the river into the 12th Street. And ah, a good question, a trick question, I might add. <laughs> when you, if you go to my website, like about Christmas, you can download a map and you will be able to, you be able to figure all that out. Uh, because it was private property, privately constructed greenway with public access, the private property owner didn't want signs up even though there's a limited liability and all that good stuff for you lawyers in the room. But the, uh, what we're doing now, it's gonna be public and I've just approved the draft for all the signs and they're gonna go in. So about the first week in January, the sign will be in and you can find it. But the best way to get a map off my, my website. The interesting part is the damn map's getting so long, I'm having to tinker with the scale now. But it, uh, a lot of people say, well, how far is it? And the map's got a scale on it. And you can figure out how far you walk or run. But if you get off and go to get off there off 12th Street, the first exit, turn right into the tennis center, park the tennis center parking lot, move forward, and you're you're there. Yes, sir. Well, the, the big deal is, you know, typically with the government, how much does it cost? And oh my God, it's going to be a safety and security nightmare. So, on the on the maintenance end, everything we design is designed to be flooded, mainly because it's in a federal floodway. So when you see it, most of it. It's been built 2002-ish. Uh, has been flooded eight or ten times. 
each government has the obligation to maintain their piece of the, of the puzzle. And in each case, they've done a pretty good job doing that. Now, we're going to have to go back in and do deferred maintenance and all that sort of stuff. But the maintenance stuff is working out pretty well. The stuff around the zoo, you know, we are actually going to, it's going to be built with Richland County uh, capital budget. It's going to be taken over by the city of Columbia. And then we're going to transfer all that land which we're acquiring to the, to the city. So the, the maintenance stuff we put it on somebody's parks department and in, in the case of the uh, in the case of new sections in Casey they've hired two extra maintenance folks and two more police officers the security piece has actually worked out pretty well because originally if you went down there you know if you're armed to the teeth you felt pretty comfortable uh, but once that greenway goes in you know you don't have to chop your way through with a machete you know, you know ranger school special stuff Lots and lots of people down there, uh, but each one of the, we, we put together a safety and security task force who said, what, do you, what will make people feel good? Put in lights, put in emergency call boxes, uh, put in police patrols, and as it turned out, the, you know, the prime weapon of trying to keep everybody safe is a million cell phones going through there. So we had very, very little problem uh, with anything on the, on the runway from a security standpoint, and a lot of that is just people using it. So. Anything else? I'm getting the high sign. Yes, ma'am. I, I want you to know I'm delighted you're spending your time and years doing something this cool. Um, and I have a 23-year-old son who discovered the uh, rivers as a young child. We came, began doing them solo about six years ago. And I have not had the courage to do the overnight trips with him, although he's taken numerous friends. And his cousins from all over the, uh, the country spent Thanksgiving um, taking a trip and they'll spend the night go another day spend the night and only come back and for some parents coming home to thanksgiving and i want you to know that river has been a godsend not just for my family but for an entire group of naturalists and i'm looking forward to having it be accessible to someone like me you know, I well it actually is yeah, the, the river but i'm encouraged to walk it well, for the, for the river piece, let me answer this question, and everybody wants to stand around, but we've got two maps out, one's on the Broad River, one's on the Congaree. The Congaree, you know, I used to do scouting all the time, and, you know, I'll take 11-year-olds, and they'll float down, and they think it's, you know, the wilderness territory, and you can <laughs> camp as long as you want and come out. Uh, for the, the Saluda, that is a big, draw whitewater river, and it can get dangerous, and so one of the things we're doing is providing safe access on the Saluda and, and a certain amount of rules. You've got to have a life jacket on when you get in the water, which is relatively common sense, but some folks miss, miss that step in school. So that is actually world-class whitewater. We've done international events out there, and so we'll have a little bit for everybody. But the idea is safe and secure, you know, for a wide range of users, and I'm delighted to hear testimony back that you know that your kids like it because if they like it and their friends like it, then you know I know my granddaughter likes it. So you know we're we're doing pretty good. Thanks a lot.